On today's episode of Watch JR Go, this is my new Capri, and we're gonna find out just how bad it can be. What is going on guys? I'm Watch JR Go, and today, like I said, we are here with my new 1992 Mercury Capri that we talked a lot about in the last episode. And this thing was $2,500. It popped up on Facebook and it's probably one of the cleanest Capri XR2s, the turbo intercooled zero to 60 in 7.9 seconds. Italian designed based on a Mazda and built by Ford Australia. I got all of this for $2,500. And I love the way the car looks, it's super cool. So the convertible top is down. Obviously a lot of you guys said throw the top in the sun. Yes, I do know that's how you put the Miata top on too when you're replacing it. I just don't want to park it outside because this car doesn't belong outside. This car is a true survivor. It's so unbelievably clean. So eventually I will put it outside and get the top up. But uh, for now, it's just going to live in the shop. Today, though, we're going to go around the car and figure out everything that is wrong with it and what it's going to take to get it all fixed. So we're going to start with the windshield, which is uh, cracked from top to bottom. And unfortunately, it is the original Ford windshield, and this appears to be an obtainium. We will see. There's the VIN if you guys want to VIN wiki the thing. I have a feeling I'll have to get aftermarket glass. Hopefully, this glass was in more than just this one car. If not, I'm in trouble because there's going to be no way to fix it. It also has a big bullseye right there. I wouldn't mind trying to fix the bullseye, but obviously, no way to fix the crack. The wiper blades are mismatched. This one is a Rain-X. That one is a Bosch. And I think we just replace them both and make them match. That solves uh, the cosmetic issues for the most part. The front tag frame, this looks aftermarket. And unfortunately, I'm not going to take it off because obviously they would have had to punch holes in the plastic in order to mount it. So hopefully the next person is down to put a tag back on the front and kind of solve the problem with the tag frame being there. This car is not absolutely flawless. As you can see, there's like a door ding right there. Uh, the fender has been rubbed on. And when we really look closely, you can see somebody tried to repair the paint right there along with that one right there. But for the most part, uh, there can't be many of these left and this has to be one of the nicest ones left in existence. Now let's move on to the real problems, the brakes. The brakes are the biggest thing I noticed on the way home. This thing, first it has like no stopping power and it is wildly bucking in the pedal while you're trying to slow down. So I'm gonna guess that some of these rotors are either warped or there's no pads left. Uh, there's no screeching noise, but actually if you look, that, that is heat checked. It's hard to see that rotor, but it does look pretty rough and there is some grooving. Uh, there's a little bit of grooving for sure. Um, can't tell if it's wavy, but that is one groovy rotor there. And of course, there's a coolant leak. So we'll look underneath real quick. You can see there's a nice puddle. It's actually a pretty big puddle. It's been sitting here for about three days. Let's figure out where that coolant leak's coming from, and that'll give us a good idea on where we're headed next to try to get this thing fixed. And while we're at it, I can't forget about the biggest problem of all, the leaves flying out of the heater vents while you're going down the road. Uh, honestly, it was so bad that I was having problems seeing for a lot of the drive home. So uh, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Start looking for our coolant leak. One of the first things I noticed when I opened this hood is look at that. Caution R12 fluid under high pressure. This is an actual R12 cooling system. Obviously, I mean, it's a 92, it was before the 134A switchover, but this hasn't been converted. There's no quick disconnects on the lines. So they told me the AC system works perfectly. I haven't actually tested that, but it's pretty crazy to see an actual R12 system still out in the wild. I think the last one of those I even saw was my 84 Porsche, and of course we, uh, went ahead and converted that over so that you can buy a refrigerant for it. The hose down there by the temp sender is actually kind of uh, expanding a little bit. And I think we should really just start this thing up, but there's a puddle of coolant, like a huge puddle of coolant right there. And there's a crossover tube right there with a little tiny line coming off of it, back into the thermostat housing. I think we're gonna have to start this thing up to find this coolant leak, let it run until it gets warm, but Look at the cute little turbo down there. What a cute little guy. Just making all the whirly noises so that we can have fun. The intercooler piping on this is this rubber radiator hose right here. It's, it's reinforced of course, but that's all it is. Pretty funny. Cold start, let's see how she does. What a ripper. Gotta love the green backlight and the clock too. The AC sort of feels like it's working. I don't know about it works great but it does sort of feel like it's working. I can 
see a drift. I actually think it's that line right there. It looks like she needs a little bit of a tune-up too if we come in close to the exhaust. You can hear the mess. This is not coolant, obviously, that's that's water. It's not slick. Little miss every once in a while. So that's our to-do list. We have to fix that little three-inch line on that coolant crossover. That shouldn't be a big deal, although the actual part obviously does not exist anymore. That's a little bit tricky. Uh, we need to get the leaves out of the blower motor. We need to fix the brakes. A windshield, it's on the list. I need to make a call. And uh, brakes were also unobtainium. I, parts for Capri's. I'm just saying, this is a really cool car, but do not buy one thinking you're gonna enjoy fixing it because parts are non-existent. Um, but the brakes, if you buy everything, were uh, about $700. We ended up with rotors, pads, and rebuild kits for the calipers, and I think that was about three or $400. It was not cheap to buy the brakes, and I already ordered them because they were days out. Lots of the parts are special order only. And uh, of course, the last thing, let's get the leaves out of the blower motor. <laughs> That's gotta happen. Um, I wanna be able to use the climate without getting blasted in the face by pieces of leaves. Starting with the blower motor, of course, because that should be the most trivial thing on the old XR2. Uh, there's a, actually floorboard lights, which is fancy. There's the blower motor, it looks like three eighths. I grabbed a socket here, and it is three eighths. So I'll zip those out with the impact and see what comes out. Leaves. Lots of them. My plan to tackle the leaf infestation is very simple. I'm going to start by vacuuming it out with a shop vac, get every loose leaf that I can, and then I'm gonna take the air compressor and the Milwaukee blower and just blast this thing as hard as I possibly can through all the vents and the blower motor hole. And hopefully that gets it all out. Uh, it should get us well on our way to having this whole HVAC system cleaned out. That took a little while, but if you've never seen it done, that's how you clear all the leaves out of your cowl and vents and AC system and all that stuff. That is the last set. I need to vacuum up right there. And they just kept coming out like that. That's probably around, I don't know, 10, something like that. I did a lot of work to get all this clean. Um, if you have a car with a removable cowl, this one's kind of iffy. You can sometimes pull a lot of it out of the front because you know this happens when they sit under trees and they just get covered in droppings. And then the first time you punch that button for the blower, it just sucks them all in. And from then on, the blower basically turns into a mulcher and fills your eyes with the leaves. So it's relatively common around here. I'd say one out of every like 10 cars, I have to do something like this. Uh, a lot of times you can just open the actual vent and that works out, but it did not work out today. Uh, which reminds me, I should probably do that. I'll do that and keep blowing. Here we go. It sounds like there's still one in there. There it is. Sounds like we got it all clean. I got the last leaf out, so one job down. The cigarette lighter was uh, laying in two pieces too. This has a little, uh, thread on piece there with like one piece of sheet metal that holds it together. This might be original. Wow, it's never been smoked in if it's original. I mean, at least it's never been used. That's incredible. Okay, it's now very tight. Let's put that back. First of all, Ford, excellent toolbox you've placed right here. Uh, it's always nice when a car has a good toolbox. This radiator mount is also a good one. You could definitely First, it has a lip all the way around it, and you could put a ton of sockets in there. Almost a full socket set. Anyway, uh, now we've got the interior done. It's time to try to fix this coolant leak. And to do that, I think we're just going to go ahead and get the battery out because it's kind of in the way. So we'll start with uh, the tins and just keep going. It looks like there's about 20 different bolts holding this battery in.
And here is our coolant leak. There's a big old split right in the bottom of that hose right there. If you can see where it's all swollen. So anyway, uh, this is some reinforced radiator hose, of course. Uh, let's go to O'Reilly's and see if they've got something like this. And we are here at the O'Reilly to grab, hopefully, some, uh, I don't know, 3 8 inch coolant hose. Uh, they should have something that works, that's for sure. What's up? Not much, you? Nothing. In a pretty funny turn of events, we went to the back and started just looking through the hoses, trying to find something that would work for this coolant bypass hose, and we came up with this uh, 18030 Gates hose, and then I just cut it to fit with my pocket knife, and then I looked it up on the catalog after I had totally rang it up, and it turns out it's the exact part number. Thanks, Trish. You, got home, have a good one. you too. Of course, you guys know the Car Ninja shop is the ultimate, so I just get the same tools he has because they are the ultimate. So somewhere in here, right here it is, the same hose clamp assortment he has. So I have about a, a million hose clamps in here and I'm just gonna use some of those to replace this. Five sixteenths to seven eighths, I bet that's it. Just got the call on the windshield and we will not know what it's gonna cost until tomorrow. Uh, if I had to guess, I, I don't even wanna guess, but I'm just gonna ballpark at a 200 and say it might be 400 because it's uh, kind of a wraparound windshield. It's a really cool piece of glass and it really makes this A-pillar tiny. The A-pillar is this big. On my F-250, it's like, you, you can't even do that. You can't even reach both sides of it. So these old cars, they were a lot different, that's for sure. And here's our new coolant crossover as well. I'm ready to stab that. So I'm just gonna slide it back in there and put two clamps on it. We've got the bypass hose installed. We've got new clamps. The battery is back in and just sitting there because it takes a long time to put that battery hold down on. That thing is super janky. It has four different size nuts holding on two bolts. Makes no sense at all. They were using one for a spacer, but it's not a good spacer. Uh, 13, 15, 10, and a 12 is what it took to. <laughs> anyway, let's start this thing up for the first time. I got the cap off so I can make sure the coolant is flowing. Hopefully this solves our issue. All right, they already sucked in most of the coolant. Let's add some more. I think the system is full of coolant again, so I'm gonna wrap this up and next on the agenda, brakes. That is everything that is wrong with my 1992 Mercury Capri XR2. And uh, honestly, most of it fixed at the same time too. So there's not too much left, uh, a major brake job and a windshield and uh, spark plugs, I think. Spark plugs should wrap this thing up. Anyway, I'm gonna go drive it. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watch where you get cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. This is my primer on how to get rid of a coolant spill. Fire up your floor sweeper and run over it a few times. <laughs> hey, water actually gets that off, unlike well. Boost! <laughs> it's hard to do this with one hand. We should call this the Capri Sun. Sun and Capri. The rear end just really looks like the Eagle Talon, and I really love the Eagle Talon. That thing is so cool.